Meet Tanner, who is an ex-race driver and an undercover police officer. He is briefed by his chief lieutenant Mackenzie about a guy named Rufus, who is Tanner's next target of investigation. To infiltrate his target's environment, Tanner gives the gangsters a little show-off in the parking lot, and they give him a driver's spot during the bank job. It's an easy task to pick up the thieves and get them to hide out. Soon the phone starts ringing again. A guy named Tico gives Tanner another mission. He picks him up and drives him to a mansion where Tanner hears shots inside while waiting, so Tico probably kills someone. Next phone call tells the driver to pick up a car that was used in a crime, but was left by a driver who panicked on the job. Tanner picks it up and drops it to the safe place where it will be repainted. Finally, Rufus calls Tanner and leaves a message that he wants to meet him. Rufus explains that he knows Tanner and remembers him from his racing times. He offers him a job. Tanner is sent to bust out one of his soldiers, being transported with an armored police car. He rammed the armored car, pick up a guy named Jean-Paul and they escape from the police. Tanner is hired to drive around the city visiting a chain of restaurants and, and make some mess outside because the owner doesn't want to pay the money for protection. Tanner wrecks five restaurants and gets another job. This time he needs to pick up a shipment of hardware and safely transport it to the safe place. Then we see a girl walking into Rufus' office and she is threatening him with a gun. Eventually Rufus gets killed cold-blooded. She hoops on the train and the driver must catch her by following the train with a car and deliver the girl to the police. During the questioning she cuts a deal with the cops and testifies that the French guy was pulling the strings and he ordered to kill Rufus. The French guy name is Castelli and he can be found in San Francisco. Tanner is sent there and he brings along his reputation, so the phone soon starts ringing. First he goes to the casino to pick up some guys who robbed it and take them to the safe house. Then we see a man talking through the phone, concerned that the police is after him. That's Mojo, Tanner's informer. Tanner meets him and gets more info about the French guy. Next job is to get to the fisherman's wharf and there Tanner picks up a package and drops it in the garage where he meets Castelli and Slater, who is also a driver working for the mob. Tanner punches Slater for some trash talk forwards him and things get a bit tense, but Jean-Paul takes Tanner's side as he owns him for helping him to escape. Castelli tells Slater to accept the fact that Tanner is working for him right now. After that, he gets a call from a guy that captured Mojo, his informer, and they want $10,000 from Tanner. He drives to the phone booth where he picks up more instructions and after a little driving from phone to phone, finally he meets the crooks that got Mojo. Tanner gives them money and Mojo tells him about Castelli cooperating with Hancock from FBI, who is on his payroll along with other FBI agents. He also warns Tanner about Slater planning to sabotage him. Tanner gets a call to pick up someone, but turns out it was a trap and the place is filled with police. Driver manages to lose the haste, then he goes to Slater who he suspects tried to frame him. Tanner wrecks his car during the chase and brings him to Mackenzie. Later Castelli's soldiers come to Tanner and inform him that Slater was busted by police, so from now on Tanner is the main driver. Then we see Castelli having a meeting about the final job in San Francisco, including Tanner as a drive man. The plan is to take out Bill Maddox. The driver picks up the hitmans and drives them to Chinese theater. They kill their target, but the police are already there. Tanner needs to lose the tail and get them to safety. And now, gangsters know that the police presence was not a coincidence, so someone is a rat. Castelli suspects Slater, but one of his men points to Tanner. Luckily, Castelli trusts Tanner, so he decides to go for Slater. Tanner meets with another undercover who informs him that Castelli had a meeting with Marcus Vaughn, so that basically means that he is playing two fronts with the FBI, partnering with both Hancock and Vaughn, who is also an agent. Tanner is afraid that if Mackenzie will inform the FBI about the undercover identity, they will tell Castelli the truth. Then Castelli's gang leaves San Francisco and flies to New York City. In New York, Tanner meets his contact who tells him to take the key and switch it on the Grand Central Station. 
driver goes there and makes the exchange. While driving back, Tanner notices that he is being followed by police. He loses the tail and goes back to the contact. Then he is ordered to steal a police car, take down one of the Granger's guys, who is like a local Al Capone or something, and make it look like it was a police job. So that Granger started thinking that he might have a rat inside his organization. Granger is probably another Castelli's target who needs to be eliminated to take over the New York City like he did in San Francisco with Maddox. Driver meets his informer who tells him that Mackenzie wants him out of the picture as he thinks that the cover won't hold much longer. Tanner is ordered to destroy Granger's car and then steal some necks from one of his men. Driver informs his contact that a hit is planned soon. Hancock is bringing half of the FBI and Tanner is warned that he should get out as soon as possible. Castelli calls and says that he's planning something big. But first, Tanner needs to prove himself in front of the others to earn their trust. So again, he does a little trial. At the meeting, the guys are informed by Castelli that he is planning to kill the president. Tanner tries to go and inform Mackenzie, but he is stopped as the job starts right now. Tanner is supposed to be a fake driver who will be driving the presidential Cadillac and his job is to drive it near a hitman so he can do his job from the other car. Tanner runs away and tries to save the president. Police think he's getting kidnapped so driver has the whole town on his tail but he manages to find a shelter in an underground garage and hands over the president to Mackenzie who informs him that they captured them all. He gives Tanner his badge back, but Driver refuses and leaves disappointed that only Castelli was arrested and corrupt FBI agents got away. Tanner leaves the town and that's how the game ends.